A common use for calorimetry in chemistry is to find the enthalpy. And it could be the enthalpy of a solution, a reaction, or a neutralization. Because pressure is going to remain constant, we'll call this coffee cup calorimetry. And you'll have two nested styrofoam cups, a thermometer, balance, and other equipment. We're going to use the Q equals MC delta T equation again with energy in heat energy being joules with Q. Mass in grams is either the water or the total solution that we're going to have in the calorimeter. C or S is called the specific heat capacity and typically we'll be using water's heat capacity. We're not going to be doing this typically for metals, but for a reaction or a solution. We're going to measure the temperature change to have a final and initial and the water is going to be the surroundings and the substance that's gonna go inside of the styrofoam cup or the calorimeter is the system. The water could absorb or release the heat to or from the system. And we'll use water's heat capacity of 4.18 joules per gram per Celsius. The other thing is if you're not gonna be using a balance to measure your masses, you can just use the density of water as one gram per mil. And if it is a solution, an aqueous solution, you can still use one gram per mil to find the mass because most of a solution is water. All right, the next thing is the heat released or absorbed is equal to the quantity, but it's opposite in sign. So be careful that when your water gains or loses heat, the reaction of the substance going into the calorimeter um, will have the opposite sign and equal value. Again, assuming no heat loss or gain. If water absorbs heat from the substance, then the water is endothermic and the substance will have been exothermic. If water releases heat, then water will be exothermic and the substance will actually be endothermic. To find the enthalpy of a reaction solution or a neutralization, step one is find the heat that the water has gained or lost. Change the sign so that the substance then has the opposite sign for heat convert from joules to kilojoules, and then divide by the moles of the limiting substance that went inside of your calorimeter. The next step then is to take your heat, divide by the moles, that'll give you what's called a kilojoules per one mole. Even though you didn't use one mole in your reaction, it will be one mole. The enthalpy is exothermic if it's negative, and the enthalpy is endothermic if it's positive for that reaction, solution, or neutralization. So if it's a reaction, we'll just call it a delta HRXN. That's kind of a catch-all for any reaction. If it's an acid-base reaction or neutralization that produces water, we'll call it a NUT, delta H neutralization. If you were to use this to calculate solid or liquid phase changes, you would call it fusion. And the one that I'm going to focus on in this uh, video is the enthalpy of solution, which is taking a solid and dissolving it into an aqueous solution. After this part, we're going to go through the experiment. What I want you to think of when you, when you watch the next part, which is the video of the experiment, just a two-minute video, we want to find the delta H or the enthalpy of solution for sodium hydroxide solid. So what equipment would you need? What data should we take? What observations will help us predict if the enthalpy of solution is exothermic or endothermic? And what calculations will need to be performed to find that final answer of the enthalpy of solution per one mole? Okay. And then what errors could occur, think about those as you continue and maybe do your own uh, calculations. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to go off to the actual video of the experiment that I ran, and then we're going to come back to here and do the calculations run the with the data that we're going to collect. So think about what data to take. And then we're going to calculate a percent error and see how I did.
So the data you should have taken was around 100 mils of water, but instead of just measuring the volume and using density, I just masked it and had 98.30 grams. The mass of sodium hydroxide was 2.55. The temperature initial was 21.1 degrees Celsius, and then it went to 26.8. So the calculations now are going to be QMC delta T, and this will be for the water, or the, really the water solution. So the first thing is notice that you do need to have the total mass of the solid sodium hydroxide and the water. So it did make a solution, so you need the total mass of the entire solution. 4.18 was the heat capacity for water, and then this was the temperature change, which we had, which was about 5.7. And then the total mass of solution was 100.85. In a lot of videos, they had mistakes. You do need to have the total mass of the entire solution here, and not just the water. That gives us the water gaining 2,403 joules. Now, I should keep this to two significant figures, but because I want to do more calculations, I'm going to carry the extra couple sig figs for now. So the water was endothermic, and then my solution, the whole process of the solution forming was exothermic. So the next thing that's most important is if you have a water molecules inside of that styrofoam cup and then you add your sodium hydroxide and it dissolves and turns into dissociated ions, the heat that was released from that whole process is why the temperature went up. And so what we can do is we can find the enthalpy of solution for that entire process. So the first thing is that the solid sodium hydroxide dissociated into sodium ions and hydroxide ions. Again, think about why I have these water molecules positioned the way I do. And I'm trying to find this answer that's off to the side in kilojoules if I had an entire one mole, okay? I had negative 2,403 joules. Um, it's 1,000 joules for every kilojoule, so it's really negative 2.403 kilojoules. But I did not react an entire mole. I reacted 2.55 grams. That's only 0 0.0638 of a mole. So when I have my final answer up here, that would be if I reacted entire mole of sodium hydroxide, which would be around 40 grams, which would be a lot. I'd need a pretty big styrofoam cup. So what you're gonna do next is you're gonna divide those two to make it into a per mole. And so my experimental enthalpy of solution was negative 38 kilojoules per mole. And that meant that when that solution formed and those sodium ions and hydroxide ions were dissolved in the water, it had 38 kilojoules released per every one mole. Again, that would be if I reacted 40 grams per one mole. So what you'll do then is you'll put it off to the side in that equation. And then I looked up the accepted value for this solution forming, which was negative 44.2. I didn't use the negative signs and the percent error. I just got rid of those and I had a 14% error. So what you want to do is think about where would my error have come from? And there are a lot of good explanations for answers to that. Well, I hope this video helped you. And when you do your own calorimetry calculations, you feel more confident. And again, it could be a reaction. It could be a neutralization or a solution. All right. Good luck, chemists. Enjoy your own calorimetry labs.